The views and opinions expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of the staff and management of Salem Media of Hawaii. Welcome to Generations Radio, where the focus is on our seniors and their families. We are here each Saturday afternoon from 5 until 6 p.m., bringing you resourceful information with our radio team of professionals in the field of aging. Stay with us for the next one hour as we explore different ways to make life more exciting and meaningful for our extraordinary seniors. Right here on AM 690, The Answer. And now, here is our host and the publisher of Generations Magazine, Percy Ihara. And good afternoon, everybody. I am not Percy. I'm Scott Spillina. I write for uh, the Generations Magazine. I've known Percy since 2008, and I'm part of the Generations Network. And for those of you that are first listening in, welcome. Um, you're tuning in to the Generations Radio Spot, um, where we talk about all things senior. Uh, seniors in Hawaii, seniors on neighbor islands, and now we're actually branching out into seniors in Vegas. Um, Basically, some background here. Um, Percy Ihara is the publisher of Generations Magazine. It's a free publication. You can pick up at the Y, at Big City Diner, at the Public Library, anywhere pretty much. And it's a great resource magazine. And the best thing is it's free. Not too many things involving seniors these days are free except for this magazine. Inside this magazine, it's chock full. They still use that term chock full of information um, about aging well, aging smartly, aging happily. Um, and one of the missions of the whole Generations Network is to help caregivers, help family members, and help seniors get the most out of life. Um, not only do you have the Generations Magazine, which I referenced, but, uh, but you'll have this radio show, but also you have a website to go to. That's right. For those of you that are tech savvy and know about that whole super highway of information, um, check out generations808.com. Um, there you will not only get the past issues of Generations Magazine, but you can also listen to the past shows of Generations Radio. So again, to reiterate, you are listening to Generations Radio and for the next hour, we are going to be talking to Kathy Wyatt about growing old healthily, smartly, confidently in Hawaii. And we're going to be talking about something that unfortunately not enough people know about. It's adult daycares. Now you might be saying, what? I thought you just either could age at home or go to a care home to age. Well, no, there is a happy medium because let's face it. No one wants to go to the home. No one wants to go to the care home. And one of the missions uh, for the Generations Network is to age well at home. And when I say that, I mean it. Um, coming up at the end of this month is the um, Generations Aging in Place Workshop, which is free on Saturday. And uh, we encourage you to come down to the Ala Moana Hotel and I believe Kathy will be there. I'll be there. And there'll be um, a lot more guests from Social Security, from Medicare, from Medicaid, um, from all the state, city, and county agencies. And the purpose is, is to help people age at home safely, smartly, confidently. Uh, because let's face it, ladies and gentlemen, growing old in Hawaii is expensive. Uh, it's especially expensive when you have to be a caregiver when you need help, when your loved ones, when your mom or dad or grandmother and grandmother cannot live independently all day by themselves. So you need help. And that's what this resource fair at the Alamana Hotel at the end of this month, August, is all about is aging in place. Now, without further ado, again, I uh, have the great pleasure of introducing Kathy White. Good afternoon, Kathy. Hi, Scott. Hey. Okay. So we were talking off air before we came on, and both uh, you and I have stories about the importance of uh, adult daycare. And it's my understanding, first of all, let's, let's introduce who the heck you are. Uh, what, what are you doing here? Uh, well, I have, I'm an RN, registered nurse uh, by trade, and I've been in the long-term care industry for over 15 years. And I decided that 
a lot of people that are in nursing homes or assisted living or um, care homes don't want to be there. They want to be at home with their families. And, and that's that. And I'm gonna interrupt you because okay. I'm rude that way. But hey, <laughs> uh, you are absolutely 100 percent right. No matter how fantastic the care home is, and we have some beautiful care homes in Hawaii. No matter uh, how beautiful they have, the, their live orchestras, they have French club, they have all these things. They play bingo, whatever like that. People prefer to stay at home if they can. Right. And and me, I'm thinking to myself, hmm, if I had to stay in a hotel or stay at home, I think I myself would choose the hotel because they make the bed and they give you meals and stuff like that. But no, if you think about it, especially for a kapuna, they have raised their children in their homes. They have grown old. They have memories. They can look at a room and have special memories of that room. They can look at, oh, yeah, I did that. I planted that tree out there in the yard. I did this extension. I remember painting this. I remember when we first moved in as a young couple without children and then seeing my child walk for the first time in this living room or I remember this or that or the other. So when we say that a senior wants to grow old at home, it's not that they just want to grow old in a building. They want to grow old in a building full of memories, full of their history. Right. And that's what's important there. And I think that a lot of people don't understand that. And they'll say, Mom, Dad, we're, we're, we're giving you, we're paying like hundreds of thousands of dollars to be at these four-star resort type of homes. Why aren't you happy? And I don't think families realize that that's not what the parent wants. The parent wants someplace they're intimately familiar with. Case in point, uh, my father-in-law, uh, he's been struggling the past 10 years with uh, multiple strokes. And the house that they live in now, to be honest, is kind of like run down uh, big time. There's issues of hoarding and all these things like that. And recently he was, after having a heart attack, recently put in a very nice facility. Um, and we would go and visit and say, boy, dad, this is so clean. And they serve you and you just ring a bell and they'll like bring potato chips or cake at night or whatever like that. Don't you like it? And his response was, I want to go home. And it's like, think, what? Are you crazy? <laughs> um, but no. And I, I bet you see this all the time. I do. And it's it's kind of sad. I mean, the, the families think they're doing the best for their loved one by putting him in a safe a safe home. But a kapuna look at going to a nursing home or a care home as going downhill. Mm. They still feel active and, and right, vital. Right. And they're, they're being sent away. And that it's sort of degrading and demoralizing in a lot of instances or like the gilded cage i mean it is still a cage and they feel that yeah yeah you're separating them from their family and friends right because they're not at home their community their community uh that they're familiar with yeah uh the other thing is uh if people because the coupon want to stay home if families realized how much economically more feasible it is to put them in care homes and keep them i mean i'm, I'm sorry keep them at home during on the evenings and weekends, but bring them to adult day centers during the day. They're happy. They're active. They're stimulated uh, uh, psychologically, and yet they get to go home in the evenings to be with their family. And that's a very good point. As we said at the very beginning of the show here, growing old in Hawaii can be incredibly expensive, right. and you have people selling their homes to be able to afford to go into care facilities. And when they sell their homes to go into the care facilities. They're not leaving the legacy they thought they would be leaving to their family. Right. And the families are oftentimes, and, and we've said on this program before, a lot of people, a lot of families are one stroke away from becoming a caregiver. And that's the sad thing is that we plan for retirement. We plan our vacations. We plan a lot of things like that, but we don't plan on becoming a sudden caregiver. And when a family member falls down and break a hip, when a uh, family member has a massive heart attack, when a family member uh, is struck with a debilitating illness like dementia or a stroke, uh, then the whole family is affected and the whole family be, has to become caregivers. And they, and they think the only option is like, well, either we have to bring somebody into this house 
and we have to send mom and dad away um, to a facility. And there might be waiting lists involved. It might be incredibly expensive. But with adult daycare, it, it's a happy medium. That's right. Um, statistically, adult daycare is about $35,000 less uh, a year than home health care. Okay. Interesting. And, I did not know that. And it's about, it's over $50,000 uh, less a, a year uh, for care homes. And then you get up into assisted living and nursing homes and it's over $100,000 less. Cha-ching. Okay. <laughs> yes. Here we go. It, it's very economical. <laughs> it's yeah. very econ now, it's not like you are an expert and how come you know so much about adult daycare? Well, I have studied uh, when I first decided that I wanted to do something to give back to the community uh, for the kupuna, um, like I said, I've been in long-term care for a long time, but I, but I wanted to be in a happy place where there's a lot of activity and then I can keep people active and physically active and uh, mentally active. Um, so I started looking into adult day care. Okay. And I really should call it adult day services and social club because yes, a lot of people that, look that, at daycare I, I as, like as the meaning, but – it's too, I can't do that right now because my advertising's out there with adult day care. <laughs> you already made the business cards. <laughs> yeah, I got the business cards and the brochures. I can't change now. Um, but I wanted to do something that was fun. And uh, this is, uh, I had a vision of what I wanted to look like and what I wanted to offer. And when people come into my facility, it's, I've been in business a little over a year. Um, I made it home-like. I got uh Leather-like recliners. I don't have hard chairs. I don't have. Okay. It's, no, yeah, it's, it's very not, it's not. It does not into, institutionalize. No, I, and I have real dining room furniture with uh, nice dark wood with the, the chairs that match, and the colors are very welcoming. It's sort of a, a teal and white and nice flooring. And when people walk in, if I can get them in the door, the first thing they say is, "This feels so welcoming and so very like good. home." Very good. Yeah, and they're real impressed with the recliners too. <laughs> so basically, then not only did you do research to become uh, or to find out how you can give back to Kapuna, but so you are in charge of, or I guess the president of a adult daycare. I'm the own. Well, I'm the owner of mine. Oh, owner. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And which and which one is that? Holly Haole Adult and, Day Center. And where's Holly Haole? <laughs> <laughs> I'm bad. Ha -ole, ha -ole. Yeah. That means the happy place, by the way. And oh, that's that, what I wanted it to be. Oh, that's a very good name. I'll, I'll tell you a story about the, uh, the names. But I'm located in Iea okay. in a medical office plaza on Ka'ahumanu Street. Okay. Okay. Uh, which is very convenient for the clients because if they have doctors in the building, I will take them to their appointments so the families don't have to leave work. Very good. Yeah. Okay. There's that, also a beautician that I take one of the ladies to have her hair done once a week too. So. And that is important. Yeah. That, that is important yeah, there. Yeah. Um, so so actually then you provide multiple services that the family can be assured that, like you say, they don't have to take off of work. Right. And it's a, a home-like environment to where the senior wants to be there. Right. Um, what about meals? I serve a hot meal at lunch. Okay. And I serve uh, break uh, snacks in the morning and the afternoon. Oh, very good there. So the, so the family doesn't have to pack up their uh, – uh, we're talking like almost their children, but I mean right. – um, so they don't have to pack up a lunch and like that. You provide the meals there. And um, do you have like certain hours of when they can be dropped off or the latest they can be picked up? Well, the published hours are 8 to 5. Okay. But I have had a patient come uh, – I'm sorry, a client, not a patient, come in at 6 o'clock in the morning because their son had to be downtown to work. All right. And then I have pe people, that, people that come uh, after five to pick them up because of traffic or because the they traffic. Get... Oh my gosh! Yeah. I'm so... yeah. <laughs> Pretty soon you're going to be 24 hours there uh, <laughs> about, with, with, yeah. with the traffic. There. That's crazy, <laughs> yeah. especially in the IA area there, getting from town to over there over Red Hill, and we've all been there. Um, okay, but you you are flexible. Basically, you're not you're not going to kick any of your clients out on the street. Is that come on? I need to go home and watch Jeopardy. Um, well, I teased some of my uh, family members that they said they're going to be late. And I said, well, she'll be sitting on the street corner waiting for you when you get here. But they know that I'm joking. I'll, I, I'll I stay hope as they do. <laughs> cause I don't want them calling me up, uh, <laughs> reporting you on elder abuse here. Yeah, no. uh, okay. Now, not only 
Um, and it sounds like you are very active, very knowledgeable. Um, but it's my understanding that also you are the president of the Adult Daycare uh, Centers Coalition of Hawaii. Adult Day, Adult Day Centers Hawaii Incorporated. Yeah. Hawaii Incorporated. It's, What's that we have 29 about? members, member facilities of Adult Day Centers and Adult Day Health Care. Um, and I'll tell you the difference about that in a minute. But okay. uh, they're uh, representing five islands. And we usually meet on Oahu because the majority of us are here. But sometimes we travel to the other islands. But we meet every other month. Um, we invite everybody that is in adult daycare uh, to join us. But we talk about new legislation if there is any. Now, why is that important? To make sure we're all compliant. So when they okay. come and do our annual survey, that <laughs> we don't get okay. jabbed. So yeah, basically, and that's one good thing about these uh, coalitions, these groups, is to make sure that you are abreast of the current laws, right. legislation, to assure that the families that come here know that you're up to speed on things. You know, like how to maybe make sure that this is a healthy, safe environment. Uh, so it sounds like you actually care because uh, no one likes regulation. No one likes to do extra paperwork. Right. But it sounds like you're so involved in this to be the president, actually, that you want to make sure that uh, the people that you're in charge with of caring for are in a safe, happy environment. Right. And I want, we offer um, speakers at our meetings to uh, give new ideas, innovative solutions to problems to all the members. Uh, we also, our big purpose is to let people know about adult daycare and, and its value to the families in the kupuna. And that's the important thing. Now, we were talking earlier about the Aging in Place conference which is happening August 20th, um, Generations um Aging in Place Conference at the Alamon Hotel from 8 to, I believe, 2 or 3. Um, and it's free conference this August 20th, Saturday. Um, now, are you going to be there? Yes, I have a, I'll have my own table. Okay. I'm also representing the organization. I'm representing myself, the Holly Haoli Adult Day Center. But I'm also um, representing the Adult Day Centers of Hawaii. Uh, so um, it's a double double purpose. So that if you, don't, if you feel like it's too far to come to IAEA to bring your uh, loved one, we have. I can have. I have a list of all the facilities on the island. Really? Okay, that's very uh, nice of you to do that. But I also say that IA is not that far away by handy van. Uh, that's right. I want people hey. to know that. I've got a, cl a client that comes from Kaneohe on the handy van. Okay. And one from Wahiwa, so that's a good distance. But good handy distance. van brings them to the door. Let us know they're there. We go down and pick them up. And, and now you can't tell me though that there is no other adult daycare closer than yours though. Well, no, I can't tell you that. <laughs> no, 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 that tells me, though, that they're willing to make that extra long trip yes. to go to your facility. Yeah. And that client came from word of mouth from a friend of theirs that um, comes to us. So it must truly be the happy place. That's what it's all about. Now, how did you get that name? Okay. Um, I worked with a girl that had gone through the Hawaiian Immersion Program. Okay. And I called her and I said, I want a name for my facility. That lets people know that it's going to be it's a fun place to come it's not dreary uh, they're going to come and have fun and play and just have a good time all day long and then go home tired and happy okay. <laughs> so so we talked about a couple of things and that one that one just hit hit me so i, I chose it right. now for those of you listening again you're listening to generations radio as part of the generations network um, where we talk about all things scene related to um our islands, and we're talking to Kathy Wyatt, um, the owner of Hale Aole, Aole. Aole <laughs> the happy place, we'll call it there. And if you want to, after the show, um, give Kathy a call. You can reach her at, let me make sure I got this number right, 798-8706. Um, Is that mm -hmm, correct? That's correct. Okay. And we're going to repeat that number later on in the show um, if you're driving around doing errands this Saturday. And, or, how about this? If you missed part of the show this Saturday, uh, tune in tomorrow because on Sunday we're re-airing it, I believe from 3 to 4, the same radio station here. Um, so, or how about this? Uh, if you missed it tomorrow and you're thinking, golly, that's Scott Spillina, the host of that show, is so dynamic that I want to <laughs> listen to him over and over again, you can go to generations808.com. Dot com means it's a website for those of you that never seen a computer before. Uh, you can go to generations808.com and you can hear the rebroadcast of that. Or how about this? Uh, if you're too lazy to hop online and go to the website or tune in tomorrow, 
you can actually go down to the Aging in Place conference. It's a free conference. Every year it gets bigger and bigger. Uh, we're talking about, gosh, I want to say over 1,000 people showed up last year. Um, and more and more vendors, Percy Hara puts together a fantastic, terrific event. And there's workshops all day long that are, again, free. Um, if anybody has anybody that needs care or in the future thinks that, you know what, mom and dad are getting up there in age, or you know what, I am a caregiver, a part-time caregiver, and I might need a little bit of help. I just want to see what the resources are and what's going on out there that can help me get some free information and maybe some swag. Um, that's the, what the youth say to free stuff. Um, I'm going to go to this free conference at the Alan Wana Hotel. So you know there's free parking there. Um, and check out the conference this, the, not this Saturday, Saturday, August 20th. And then you will meet firsthand, shake her hand, uh, Kathy Wyatt, and she can give you that master list of all the adult daycares out there. Um, plus, also, you can ask her questions about how to choose the appropriate adult daycare. And we're going to, I'm going to ask that question right now, Kathy, is like, here you have a family that's saying, you know what? Mom and dad are good enough to stay at home. They don't want to go to a care facility. So now that I've listened to that Generations Radio um, show, let's put mom and dad, not put, let's, let's visit some adult daycares. But how do we, which ones do we choose? How do we know how to choose? So Kathy, what advice would you give someone just starting out wanting to explore um, that? Well, I don't want to say it's, your choice by location because location is not necessarily and, and you just demonstrated that by yeah. saying you have people making that longer trip to your facility because you guys clicked basically right um but okay but location i guess sometimes would be important yes it is that's why it's good to have a li the list that i can give you all our member facilities but there are a whole lot of others out there there's some in homes that have you know maybe five or six clients okay. um there are huge places that have over 50 clients mm -hmm. uh, it's just it, just looking at them and looking at their activities program and what they offer to keep the the, the clients busy and, and uh, stimulated during the day so okay you bring up a good point so let's say that you take mom or dad or grandma and grandpa and let's say mom dad let's visit some of these places here um, when would you recommend visiting somebody I would recommend just walking in. Really? Don't okay. make an appointment because that way you get wow. the full picture. Look at you, sneaky, sneaky. <laughs> um, okay. I invite people to come in anytime they want to. Because <laughs> okay. I, I you have nothing to hide. <laughs> come on in here. Just yeah. make sure that it's open first. Yeah. Um, okay. So just walk right in. And, and then I think that actually would tell you the attitude. Exactly. Uh, if they're all nervous, uh, uh, come back in a couple of hours, or, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then, then you'll have that. Attitude. They should be open all, all the time. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. That's a very good, uh, very good, very good tip there. Tip number one, just walk right in. Um, now you mentioned something about when trying to find an adult daycare uh, facility, uh, their activity boards. Um, what do you mean by that? Well, the one thing, the one thing that brings uh, clients to adult daycare is they're used to sitting at home all day long watching television with yes. no physical exercise and no other brain stimulation. And watching TV all day is brain numbing. So the activities are very important. Uh, physical exercise is very important. So it, you want to look at their activities calendar, see what they offer during the day. Okay. Okay. And note that there are different levels of dementia. On okay. some of the clients. So you have to have different kinds of activities to offer to those clients. And that's one thing. And we talk about the benefits to the client um, or to the guest or however you want to phrase mm -hmm. them. You talk about their benefits of that stimulation of just getting out of the house, a new environment, but a temporary one so they can come home at night mm -hmm. um, doing so. But don't you see this is also a way to help the caregivers. I like to tell the caregivers that my business is 50% for the clients and 50% for them. Yes. Because there's, it's very stressful and, and a strain on the entire family to take care of a loved one that is uh, prone to falls right. or has dementia. Right. And they need extra special care. And, and, um, and that's the saddest thing. I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, the saddest thing is that when I go out into the public and when I talk to people, it's amazing how 
like I remember one. I remember actually at the um, Good Life Expo at the Blaisdell last year. Uh, a nice gentleman. He came up. We talked story, and he did not know. And he was a caregiver for his dad. He did not know how many resources were available to help him out. Yeah. And that's one thing that I think um, people in our profession have a danger of doing is taking for granted that what we know is what everybody knows and that we know there's resources to help out people. Uh, when a lot of the public, a lot of our listeners out there, turn off the radio, uh, <laughs> don't realize that there are resources out there to help them. Right. And, that, and that's why I cannot say enough to pick up Generations Magazine, um, to listen to this radio, to go to the Aging in Place, to seek out the resources available. Because if you are a caregiver or if someone's caring for you and you do see a change in their behavior, if you have your son or daughter or family member caring for you and you feel bad or you see that your son or daughter is getting short-tempered or is changing, they always seem tired and you feel bad because you have put them in this position because you, excuse me, you fell down or you had a stroke and you feel guilty and all that stuff like that. And you, and that you feeling bad does not help anybody. You helping them get help helps people. And I think that by taking advantage of the resources for not only yourself, because as Kathy's saying, there's great opportunities for you to get out of the house and get that stimulation that you are so used to all your life being independent, um, but also taking a break, giving a break to the person caring for you. I think that's very important. The other thing is uh, we have folks that come um, that just want to get out of their house. They, they're, yes. they're sort of still independent, but they need some outside activity. So they come and they meet wonderful friends. Um, even the ladies that don't remember what they did that morning mm -hmm. are, are just so much fun. Well, that's it. We are social creatures. Yeah. We are social creatures. And in my job as being the head of the elder abuse unit at the prosecutor's office, I see that a lot of people become victims because they were lonely and they let people into their lives that they ordinarily wouldn't, but they crave that social interaction. Right. They crave, and that means that they'll let maybe that salesperson come into their home or they'll let that caregiver spend a little extra time and then take advantage of them just because they are lonely and they crave that. But with uh, services you provide through uh, your adult daycare, it sounds like that will help them um, out tremendously. Yes. Now, uh, there are some of the um, kapuna that come are very resistant at first. The family's trying to reach out and ask for help. Um, but once they get there and see all the other folks and do all the activities and get get excited about being there, their families tell me they get up at 4 o'clock now to get ready to come to Holly Hell. Because, <laughs> because it does give them purpose, and yeah. they do take pride. Yeah. And these are people that most likely had a profession or had a career or were used to going out when they were more independent. And, and that's the greatest thing about this generation is their pride in their appearance, how – um, they had other people view themselves and the responsibilities they took upon themselves. And I can easily see that. Um, and not to uh, make light of the situation, but it's like I'm a father of two. And obviously the first couple of weeks of school, I have an eight-year-old and she hates it. She'll say, I hate, I hate getting up in the morning. I hate it. By that second or third week, she's enjoying going to school yeah. because we all at one point fear um, the unknown fear change to a certain degree. Uh, but once we realize, once we make that initial view through the door and say, wait, it's not so bad, um, then, then I can easily see um, people liking the experience. Um, you are listening to uh, Generations Radio, part of the Generations Network, uh, part of Generations Magazine. We will be right back. With and we'll be right back after this break. Six million Americans have kidney disease and most don't know it. The day I was diagnosed, I didn't know what to do. I called the National Kidney Foundation, and the young lady who answered stayed on the phone with me and walked me through step by step. 
She too was surviving kidney disease. And she showed me there could be life after kidney disease. Visit the National Kidney Foundation at kidney.org. Now you know. Moon Physical Therapy is here to help you back to recovery. Moon Physical Therapy is located on Ward Avenue across from Sports Authority. Physician prescribed for motor vehicle accidents, workman's comp, or that body pain that comes from rushing to play without warming up. Also event cardiopulmonary rehabilitation with our one-on-one -on -one patient care. Moon's Aqua Therapy heated endless pool allows for low impact exercise with less pain on land. We will give you the right exercises to get you back to health. Ask your doctor to prescribe Moon Physical Therapy. Moon Physical Therapy. We achieve results. Aloha. This is Martha Clopin. And Al Harrington. Choosing the right Medicare plan not only saves you money, it also helps you avoid headaches and heartaches down the road. We want to remind everyone to listen to a Medicare moment with Martha. Sundays from 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. as we help answer important questions on Medicare so you can stay healthy, wealthy, and wise all year long. Call me at 543-2073. 543-2073. I was an addict from the age of 13. I finally decided it was time for a change. I walked into the Salvation Army Adult Rehabilitation Center, and that got me ready for the real world. Now, I choose to be guided by Jesus Christ, and today, I'm building a powerful and promising future, free from drugs and alcohol. Please shop at the Salvation Army Family Stores. With our discounted sales, your support through your purchase helps men live a clean, sober, and productive life. Got Vegas on your mind? Get Vacations Hawaii on the line. Vacations Hawaii offers weekly four- and five-night Honolulu to Vegas packages, which include three meals daily from $6.99. Stay at Hawaii's favorite casinos, California, Fremont, Main Street Station, and Orleans Hotel. Vacations Hawaii will get you there in comfort on deluxe wide-body 767 planes with complimentary in-flight hot meal service. Vacations Hawaii's frequent flyer program gives you future travel discounts and credits. So if you're ready to win big, call Vacations Hawaii at 591-4777 or visit pointvacationshawaii.com. Today, more than ever, we local people are living longer than any other state in the union with more seniors, baby boomers, and caregivers. Generations Radio promotes the importance to be proactive as we all age. The radio team will focus on issues facing our seniors and their families, finding resources to navigate healthy aging along with financial, legal, and caregiving information. So join Percy E. Hauer from 5 until 6 each Saturday, right here on AM 690, The Answer. Focusing on the issues facing our seniors and their families today. Here's our Generations Radio host, Percy Ihara. And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is not Percy Ihara. My name is Scott Spelina. I'm part of the Generations Network. Um, for those of you that are first tuning in and first hearing the word Generations, let me explain a little bit about what Generations is. It all started off a long, long time ago with Generations Magazine. Uh, Generations Magazine is a free magazine found all over the islands, plural. Um, you can find them at, I'm just looking, oh, this is a long list here. I'm not going to read this whole thing. Um, you can find them at Salvation Armies. You can find them at Safeway. You can find them at the library. You can find them downtown kiosk. You can find them outside Big City Diner. Just, just pick up a magazine and you'll, and you'll have a whole list. You can find it. Or if you're saying, you know what, I don't want to get out, I'm lazy, I'm watching television, I don't want to do that, well, hop on your computer and go to generations808.com, 808, .com, 808 that's the area code, folks, um, generations808.com, and go on the website, and you can see the magazine online. Um, but more importantly, you can listen to this same radio show online as well if you miss it and say, hey, boy, that's Scott Splane. He's so dynamic a speaker. I can listen to him all day over and over again. You can. Your wish is true because you can go to the Generations 808 magazine website and listen to that. Uh, but also we're talking about Generations Network. What that is, it's a resource for life for seniors um, and their caregivers and their family members and anyone that wants to grow old in a happy, safe, healthy environment. Um, now, you're lucky if you're just tuning in uh, to Generations Radio because I'm going to tell you that at the end of this month, August 20th, you have the Aging in Place Conference. It's a big conference. I would say there's 
two big conferences with, for seniors um, for, per year. One is the Generations um, Aging in Place Conference at the Alam One Hotel um, Saturday. Uh, so after you finish watching your cartoons on Saturday, you can go down to the Alam One Hotel from 8 to 3 o'clock. Free conference. Lots of free goodies over there. But also, more importantly, there's resources. There's a ton of resources. I think they can have over 60 vendors, um, exhibitors over there. Plus, they're going to have breakout sessions um, so that you can uh, talk to the experts in the field. You can talk to Social Security experts. You can talk to um, Medicare, Medicaid. You can talk to all these people that are in the know about what you want to know about with the whole purpose of aging in place. What does that mean? It means that as soon as mommy and daddy get old, you don't have to throw them into a home. You can find ways to have them stay at their homes um, economically, safely, independently with the information you get from the Aging in Place Conference. And then next month, September, we have the Good Life Expo, which is the big three-day one. It's the biggie uh, where you have 26,000, I think they had last year, um, over 300 vendors, and you'll find Generations there as well. Uh, but the Aging in Place Conference is sponsored by um, Generations Magazine. And actually, I think Percy Ihara, I don't know how he did this, but he's going to be the ambassador of goodwill for the Good Life Expo coming up in September. And he's not that good-looking a guy. I don't know why they wanted to make him the ambassador when I think I would make, I think I could wear that crown better than him, but we'll, we'll take that up at a later date. Um, today, though, we for the next half hour, the remaining part of the hour, we're going to be continuing our conversation with Kathy Wyatt. Who is Kathy Wyatt? She is the owner of Hale Ohole. Ha'ole. Okay. I'm so bad. The happy place. We'll call it the happy place. Um, she owns and operates an adult daycare. Plus, she's the president of the Adult Daycare Hawaii Coalition, which I know I got that wrong, um, the title of that. And what we're doing is we are talking about the benefits of adult daycare. And I'm going to just uh, take uh, steal some of Kathy's thunder real quick and just let um, you go all out there in Radio Land know about my situation in that. Ten years ago, my father-in-law had a massive stroke, um, full paralysis right side of his body. Um, our family, it devastated our family because basically we did not know what to do. And naturally, being instant caregivers, we're thinking like, how can we do this? I mean, my wife and I work, my brother works, he lives at the home. And so does that mean that one of us has to quit our job? Or does that mean, I mean, how can we take care of dad uh, during the daytime, okay, we just can't leave him at home. I mean, yeah, it's not like a simple, I have fallen, I can't get up type of situation there. He needed help. He needed supervision. And so, and we didn't want him watching Oprah and Wheel of Fortune all day long. We want him to get out of the house as well. And that's when we discovered uh, adult daycares. And we're thinking, oh my gosh, because we could not uh, afford one of these fancy schmancy uh, care homes and we did not want to put the family house on the market or do um, any sort of home equity loan or reverse mortgage or anything like that because um, they want to keep it part of the legacy which is understandable so what's the happy median and well instead of locking up my father-in-law in the bedroom with a can opener and some chef boy rd we decided to um, due to adult daycare, and it has changed our lives for the better. Now, Kathy, I am sure that I'm not the only one to express to you what a life-saving um, change going to adult daycare has been for a family. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have so many neat stories from family members that have brought their uh, family member to, to my facility and I'm sure this happens at all the facilities as well but what for, for one story is a little lady that had she had been coming to us and then went to the mainland for two months to be with her other daughter okay. and then she was going to come back to us but while she was gone she had a, a serious heart attack and they had to put it in a pacemaker so when she came back to the to Oahu she was debilitated and oh she goodness. she didn't hardly look like herself she'd lost so much weight and everything wow. Wow. very weak so but when she was able to to uh sit up to, all day they brought her back to me 
and we started working with her exercise and just getting her involved again with her with her friends that she had made at the facility and pretty soon she got rid of her walker and then a little time after that she got rid of her cane and now she's just as perky as she ever was. Wait, wait, wait. Let's backtrack here. Okay. okay. So, so what happened? So she had the heart attack. She was in very poor health when she came to your facility. What, what miracles did you perform at your uh, place there? Well, it wasn't laying hands on okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think just getting her active again and she felt like she had a purpose instead of I'm going to die now because I had this really bad heart attack and, uh, and all this other stuff. She got active again. She got – she started exercising again. She got – um got with her friends and got to, to rejoin society, actually, instead of being uh, at home in bed or on the couch. And I think you bring up a very, very good point here, is that if someone can no longer be independent, uh, um, everybody is dealing with such powerful emotions. You have family members dealing with emotions of frustration guilt for being frustrated because they love mom and dad yet they become mom and dad's caregiver or they love mom and dad and they have to quit their job to care for mom and dad and so they're angry but then they love them so they're feeling guilty and all these crazy emotions that go through people's minds and conversely you have the person that needs the help uh, you have the kapuna that's feeling depressed for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. um, and I see this a lot, the depression that's involved there. And it sounds like in that situation that you just described to our uh, listeners, uh, your facility helped with everybody's emotions involved. Th that's the purpose of adult daycare, yes. Yeah, because, and I'm seeing this, and I saw this with my father-in-law, is that when he's feeling helpless at home, when he's feeling that he's becoming burdensome, then he was feeling depressed. And then you, I actually, I actually saw the physical manifestations of depression. He was sleeping more. Mm -hmm. He was non-communicative. He was spiraling downward. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen listening, if you know of anybody that these symptoms um, or you're afraid that your own parent or grandparent or you're afraid that the, your uh, caregiver that's providing help for you is suffering from um, caregiver stress, from being overwhelmed with the responsibilities of caregiving, there are resources out there. And Kathy, uh, whose phone number is 798-8706, she's a tremendous resource for you. Um, and so we encourage people to get the help they need. And it's not, trust me, trust me, Kathy was giving us some very scary numbers at the very beginning of the show about how adult daycare, I mean, we all know that living in Hawaii is expensive. I mean, that's obvious. Um, living in Hawaii is ex extremely expensive. It's the highest cost of living, I think, right behind San Francisco. And growing old in Hawaii is expensive and scary. And then um, it is so scary, yet you don't want to make foolish, you don't want to be penny wise pound foolish and do something stupid and not spend any money. But I think that with adult daycare, that's a very happy medium that gives the caregiver the break they need, that gives the uh, person that needs the assistance, uh, the social outlet, that gives them a, a, another purpose because we all need a purpose and we're all social creatures and we all need to communicate with one another. And adult care, daycare I have seen in my own family has been a life-saving, has been a, a mind-saving because we were losing our minds um, as the caregivers of my father who we loved. Um, so yeah, uh, Kathy, you, you indicated before that the doctor that um, saw improvements could not recommend your uh, facility enough. Um, have there been other doctors that have uh, used your facility? Uh, because I'm located in a medical office plaza, this Mary, Mary Salvi office uh, medical plaza, um, some of the docs in the building actually refer their clients, their patients to me, which is really helpful, and I'm really appreciative of that. Well, and that, well. that tells me that there's trust involved. Yes. I, I mean, that, and because doctors don't refer people to, like, anybody um, because it's their name that they're giving the stamp of approval on. So for them to say, you know what, 
that Kathy girl down there, she's running a good tight ship. And I feel confident <laughs> referring my patient to that person. Because let me tell you, if you were like dropping people downstairs left and right, you can I can tell you right now that they would not be referring anybody to you. That's right. Yeah. Right. So that, so I think that should make you feel very good. Um, yes. Now, we were talking earlier about when you check out adult daycares, when you just go and knock on the door, don't worry about making appointments, just check them out, look at their activity boards. Uh, see what they do that's stimulating to the guests or the patients that uh, go there during the daytime. And you're telling me some interesting things that you do at Hale. How Ole. How Ole. <laughs> what do you do over there? Well, uh, one of the things that we do is we do outings twice a month. And we, we rent a large van and take the folks out. We've been to the aquarium. We've been to Waimea Valley for the, the, the waterfall. Mm-hmm. And they were very accommodating with the with the uh, little tram that they take people out. Oh, excellent. Uh, we go bowling. Really? Uh, and even the people that don't think they can bowl anymore, they set it up like they do for the keiki. Yes. And, and I'm well familiar because I have two small children, yeah. and so they have the ramps and all yeah, that. Yeah, and they have there. a blast. If they had those gutter guards when I was bowling, I wouldn't have been such a bad bowler. <laughs> Everybody's bowling 300 now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, we've gone swimming at the YMCA in Waipahu. Oh, my gosh. And that is just my favorite story in the whole wide world because a couple of the folks are use walkers and they're very their their legs don't work as good right. as they used so to. So they're unsure of their uh, yeah. yes. But they get in the water and they're just free as, as a bird. They just have such a good time and swim around and they don't have to worry about falling over and all this other stuff. It's just it's just delightful to, to watch. Oh, uh, we do arts and crafts. We do uh, morning exercise and afternoon exercise. Mm-hmm. And that's chair exercises. Um, we do walkabouts around the building. Um, we watch, we do, we do armchair travel armchair once a week. Travel. What's that? We go on YouTube and pull up a different country or a different state okay. and travel through that country or state and learn about that. And oh, that's wow. really, it's a lot of fun. Fascinating. Yeah. I mean, it's almost like homeschooling. All the resources available for homeschool, you can do that for adult daycare. Right. We play a lot of cards, okay, and that gets pretty funny because <laughs> they get real competitive, and and there's a lot of laughing. That's the best part. There's a lot of laughing. Now, um, now, this, now this is social gambling we're talking about, right? I'm, I'm talking about <laughs> Rummy and, and okay, Uno. So, okay, so there's not going to be any SWAT teams that converge no, they, no, no. Sort of gaming I, house. I, I won't be spending time in jail for gambling. Okay, very good. Um, we do we do uh, we do chair volleyball with a big beach ball. Okay. And that gets really loud because they have so much fun <laughs> trying to keep, trying to to jam it around somebody's head. But it's kind of, it's just they they just get so involved and just laugh a lot. And that's that's what I want them to do is laugh a lot. And I'm so sure that the family that uh, has taken their mom or dad to your uh, home, um, and I, I'm gonna call it a home now because it sounds very inviting. Um, I'm sure that makes them feel better as well. It does. Because I'm sure they're dealing with certain feelings about saying, am I a failure as a child not to be able to care for my mom or dad? But by you giving them an environment where they know that their mom and dad um, will be safe, will be happy uh, and comfortable and want to go there, that gives them such relief, I'm sure. I've, I'm so blessed to have a wonderful team that, that helps me take care of the Kapuna, but I'm so blessed by the generous families that I have too because they do appreciate it and they let us know that and it, it tears at my heart strings to, to hear some of the stories that they, they bring back to me about what mom does at home now because of what she's learned at the building. Well, and being the, a caregiver to my own father-in-law, I can really relate to that. And that's why I'm so appreciative of the adult daycare that um, my own father-in-law goes to during the day because of the services they provide, because it does allow the rest of the family an opportunity to recharge um, and not feel guilty or not feel those negative emotions that sometimes couple being a uh, a caregiver. And so on behalf of everybody in my situation, I just want to thank you, Kathy, for doing uh, what you do. Thank you. I also wanted to touch on um, 
it makes me sad to have people come and I've heard this so many times recently that it's I'm surprised I hadn't heard it before but so many people are saying that they had to retire from a job that they really loved mm. because they had to go home and take care of mom and dad and that breaks my heart that they didn't know about the resources for like as adult daycare right. or, or whatnot well and that's one of the reasons that Percy Hara um started the whole generations network is with a magazine which is a tremendous resource that you can find free around the island with this radio show with the aging in place conference is happening at the end of this month august 20th at the island one hotel um, there are resources to help caregivers to avoid the caregiver stress and that's one reason that we wanted you on the show kathy because uh, you are part of the whole Generations Network, and we and Percy has seen you do good work. And in talking to you this past hour, um, I can see that it's a passion, um, that you don't take this lightly as a responsibility, that with your involvement as a president of the uh, Coalition of Care Homes, uh, Adult Daycare, and it's good and it makes me confident to know that, you know what, if doctors are referring people to you, if other clients are referring their friends to you, you must be doing something right. I think I am. <laughs> I get a lot of positive feedback. Well, I'm a lawyer and we deal with facts. Yeah. We deal with evidence. And the evidence says to me that you're doing a, a very, very good job. Well, um, I'd also like to – I have a website. Okay. Um, it's www.hhadultdaycare.com. Okay. That's HH for Holly. How old are you, Scott? Okay. Yeah, that's right. HH. <laughs> HH. Um, and, my, and he gave me my phone number, 798-8706. So if you have any questions, I invite you to call me and I can be a resource for you. It yes. doesn't mean you have to come to my facility. No, 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 no. But, but, but like you say, that, yeah. and they can meet you. A face to face and talk story with you exactly. um, August 20th at the um, Aging in Place conference at the Alamon Hotel. You'll be uh, one of the many exhibitors there that have just a lot of good information. But I'll be the only exhibitor wearing a crown. That's right there. <laughs> uh, real quickly, uh, before the top of the hour, explain this whole crown thing. Well, I was given the opportunity to um, become a, a contestant in the Ms. Medicare pageant last year, um, even though I hate to say that I'm eligible for Medicare, but <laughs> <laughs> but I I was uh, chosen as Miss Original Medicare okay. in October. So uh, part of my duties is to appear at the uh, at the senior fairs, um, aging in place conference, uh, wearing my crown and sash to uh -huh. promote Medicare. Well, look at you there, royalty. <laughs> Uh, now, this is a uh, pageant that happens yearly now. Is that correct? It's, yes, it is. It's in October. In there's October. no bikini contest. Okay. Okay. Uh, and there is. Well, that, that means there's no crash dieting or anything like that. Nah, no. Right <laughs> <laughs> All the unhealth, unsafe stuff there. But it's so much fun. And, and I feel uh, honored to be out there representing Medicare and uh, Martha, but, who is one of our. Now, did partners. you have to like. Uh, be tested and Medicare and how to be eligible and all that? I mean, I'm sure people come up to you and say, what's this all about? Well, they come up to me and ask me that, but I also refer them to Martha okay. uh, uh, um, with the Medicare. Medicare she, moment, yeah. moment, I think. Okay. Um, but uh, to be become one, to, to win, you're interviewed by six judges. Really? Oh, yeah. my gosh. That must have been stressful. Uh, well, it was, <laughs> but it was also fun. They make you really relaxed. And then uh, Justin Cruz from one of the TV stations, the weatherman on one of the TV stations was the MC. Okay, very good. And when you, after you had the interviews, you get up on stage and you're in your finery or your um, aloha wear. And oh. he asks you questions and you speak to the audience at that time. Oh, very good. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us uh, this afternoon. My pleasure. And, and we, uh, again, uh, I'm Scott Spelina from Generations Radio. Uh, you're listening to Generations Radio, part of the Generations Network. Um, thank you very much for tuning in this hour. You can re you can hear the rebroadcast tomorrow, Sunday, or listen to us on generations808.com. Uh, please make it a point to pick up Generations Magazine. Um, the new one just hit the stands yesterday. Um, you can find them all over the island at your libraries. Um, and so um, it's a free resource and... 
And we wish you to live well, live happy, live with aloha, and take care of each other. Thank you very much.